Hey, real quick before we dive into the Hardcore Closer podcast, if you haven't already, jump over to hardcorecloser.com, sign up and join over 20,000 sales professionals from around the world and receive free hardcore sales training every week after week that will help you step your game up. Now buckle up closers, here's Ryan, let's do it. What's up closers? Welcome to the Hardcore Closer Podcast. I'm your host, broadcaster, podcaster, lead master, sales master, Ryan Stuman. I'm the CEO of HardcoreCloser.com. If this is your first time here, I'm super excited. Because listen, this show is all about helping the sales community improve, right? Bigger, better, faster. That's what we're all about. We want you to be able to get higher premiums for the services that you sell because you deserve it, right? If you believe in what you sell, you believe that what you sell is the best, you should get paid like you're the best, right? You shouldn't have to settle for second rate prices when you have top tier products, right? This is, I, this is this podcast, me, your host, I'm behind the sales community. I want you guys to win. I want you to go out there into the marketplace and crush the competition. I want you to go out there in the marketplace and give your awesome products and services to the people that can benefit from it the most because they're suffering from problems that need you my sales friend as the solution. So I'm excited that you're here. If this is your first time, I'm a little over the top. I'm a little passionate about this community, but you will love me if you are in sales. If you've been here more than once, I'm super glad that you're here. Continue to share this, share this with, you know, if if this is your first time here, thank whoever invited you, first of all, and then make sure after today that you invite people as well. If this is your second time here, all I ask in exchange here at the Church of the Closer Nation is that you go over to the collection plate that we call the reviews, right? And give us a five-star review, man. Five-star reviews are huge to us. They mean a lot uh, because as people scroll through, they see that we've been rated by a bunch of people. Then they take a chance on our podcast. They assume that it's popular. That's how we get them in here. That's how we rope them in. And that might be how you're listening to this message right this second. Uh, let's look over here to review. We got a five-star review by Sales Killer 2016. First of all, Sales Killer 2016, that's a pretty cool name. I'm just going to say I'm kind of jealous that that's, that's not my name. He left this one in April. But like, how do you just show up on on iTunes and you become sales? Dude, that is a smoking awesome name. Like, congratulations, sales killer. And he says, the sales killer 2016 right here with this five-star review. He says, a stone cold killer in the sales arena. Well, it sounds like there's two sales killers involved in this review right here. I'm really digging this. He says, seriously, we need more people like Ryan Stuman telling the masses how it is. You allowed me to wake up and realize that I wasn't being true to myself in sales. The alter ego sales personality is no more. I love it. Love it, right? It's an awakening. Say, man, you know what? Podcast hits so hard, we be awakening killers and stuff. You know what I'm saying, right? Boom, shakalaka. Hey, listen, this show is podcast is uh, sponsored by Calixo.com. The, the uh, dude I hear the owner is like extremely handsome, awesome, and quite the salesperson. Uh, C L Y X O dot com forward slash closer. If you want to check out mine, see what it's all about. It's a place for you to go on social media, like a place for you to park all of your social media and for people to be able to find you. You know, not everybody's on Instagram. Not everybody's on podcasts. Not everybody's on Facebook. Some people are on LinkedIn. Some people are on Snapchat. And using Clickso is a place to send everybody to one spot without having to have a website or any of that other stuff. Just send them to one spot and they can figure out where they want to search you, uh, where they want to connect with you. And then you can search for other people on Clickso too. We've got thousands of members at this point, uh, which is pretty cool. There'll be uh, thousands and more after you sign up, after listening to this podcast, right? And uh, it's just a tool that I personally invented, hence why I said the owner's awesome. Uh, but it's a tool that I personally invented uh, and have paid out of my own pocket to have you know programmers set up because I think that it's needed in the marketplace today. There's a lot of social media channels out there, and it's a lot to keep up with. And uh, ClickSo solves a, a problem that we face in the modern marketplace because you can use it on your emails. You can use it in your uh, WordPress site, like wherever people might want to contact or follow you. You just replace 20 icons with one instead of having like 20 different, you know, social media icons taking up all sorts of space, figuring out where you got to put them, driving your website engineers crazy. You just get one simple C with like a circle cloud thing around it. That's the ClickSo logo. It's awesome. And it's, it's, and, it's, and it's best for video and like audio calls to actions instead of saying like we just went through all that. So, all right, follow me on Facebook, uh, Robert Wiseman. Follow me on Twitter, you know, like going through all your lists. You just say go to clickso.com and connect with me out there. You know what I mean? All my shit right there. 
What, what's what's up, producer Robert? I see you getting behind the click zone movement here. Appreciate the. Uh, Oh man, I was early, Sharks, bro. Right I there. have R W as my handle. You know what I mean? Like, there's still some stuff that you can be like, have your name or you know something. Oh yeah, so there's good not, SEO like, with it you know, too. Yeah. Look, sales killer 2016. You know, you can have that one, whatever, whatever you're looking for. Dude, how how cool is that though? If you got like the the tag sales killer 2016. Hey, first of all. He's obviously currently killing it. He's not sales killer 1985 <laughs> like he used to sell cars like one of those old guys, <laughs> yeah. right? Like he's sales <laughs> killer 2016. He's doing shit in present tense. Well, I think it's sales killer 2016 he, because the username sales killer probably wasn't available. So he had to add this at the, the 2016 at the end of it. Customize I mean, it. I, that, that name inclines me to believe that people are dying right now. Mm -hmm. You know, the sales killer 2016, that's this year. People are dying right now, Robert. Oh, absolutely, bro. I was seeing, and that, what was the other name? Some, some of the. I mean, that's a creative name compared to like, um, like I think the last one was like VT or what was it? You kept saying it to. You kept saying his name like it was his name. Like it was like VTC one three five. I don't remember, but it had me dying. <laughs> Hey, you know what? That's what we should do. Like when you have like a five star review, we appreciate that. But when you got a five star review with a kick ass tag or a kick ass username, those are the ones that we want to read, right? We want to read Pussy Slayers 2016. <laughs> yeah. Those you know I mean? will so that, yeah, all those jump are the best to the ones, top. right? Yes. Yeah, those yeah. Are definitely. So there's the challenge. Write a review, come up with a creative username, and you're most likely going to get sponsored on the show here, right? <laughs> or mentioned on the show here. Okay. See, you know, Robert, you're not supposed to distract me like that. See how we got off on a tangent talking about, you know, slaying the pussy and everything else all of a sudden. And, and I was focused on sales stuff, right? You just you took me off my guard here. So uh, I like it. All right. So let's talk today uh, about the five, uh, the five phase recipe for closing a prospect. So I, I have a, uh, a process that I put in order and I have taken it from many a smart salesperson over the years because uh, – I've been through a lot of sales trainings, you know, I, I'm still a student of the game. I buy programs all the time because how in the world could I tell people to buy my programs if I wasn't uh, buying programs, right? Because we buy how we sell. Uh, the other thing is how could I tell people to invest in uh, their sales knowledge and sales education and buy my stuff if I'm not investing in my sales education and buying other people's stuff? You know, in the last three weeks, I've been to uh, three different, four different masterminds uh, to where I'm learning from people that uh, are playing on a high level, right? And so I believe that you should uh, you should always uh, be learning from somebody that is uh, that has done what you want to do, right? And then you should always be lifting somebody up who wants to do what you've done. Just think about that for a minute. So anyway, I want to talk to you about this because I've been using these phrases, uh, this this five step process for quite a while now, but it's, it's things that I've taken from different trainings. So min, much of this might sound really familiar to you. Uh, if it doesn't, congratulations, it just might change your life. But if it does sound familiar to you, it's also good to hear the basics again. And sometimes I can say something in a particular combination of words that just may unlock the inner conscious, the inner subconscious inside your brain, change the way that you've had a view about that this entire time. Uh, it happens, right? Like you go to a seminar and you've heard them say the same thing over and over again, but this time the guy says it with just a couple of different words and you've heard it before and all of a sudden it makes magical sense. So let's talk about the uh, five-step pr process. I, I, you know, like on my notes here, and uh, you don't have to edit this out. This would be kind of funny. But on the notes here, it says recipe. And I don't feel like this is a cooking show. I feel like it is a closing show. I think we can do a little bit better with the title there. Just saying. <clears throat> Yo, you just called out my copy right now. Yeah. Dude, dude was hungry. Right? He had the munchies when he wrote this. He's like, recipe, man. That's the perfect word, dude. <laughs> this sounds like a recipe, man. Oh. All right. So. <laughs> So listen, you're going to just bake on this for a minute here. All right. So here's the deal. First thing that you've got to do is you've got to, uh, you've got to bond with somebody, right? And I'm going to give you the basic, the outline equation and we'll go through. It's like bonding, trust, interest, desire, and offer, right? So let me take you through all this. Bonding is the most important part, right? Because as a salesperson, if you're lacking empathy, you're probably not going to close a lot of sales. Like it's our natural inclination to want to bond with the prospect. You know, when the I worked in the uh, the mortgage business and the car business, the other sales guys would come by, and even my salespeople do this today. They say, "Well, the guy likes me," you know, and they say, "Well, the, you know, the the prospect really likes me." 
well, they're feeling me. They, we get along well. They like me. We naturally, as a salesperson, you naturally want to bond with somebody. We want people to like us because we want them to feel like we want them to have a good experience when they're exchanging dollars for our value. Right. So bonding is that first phase that you've got to you've got to enter. But like this is this is where you start things like in the NLP world, world, you've got echoing and mirroring and all that stuff. But here's what I do. Right. People identify with three main things where they're from, their name, what they do for a living. Uh, most cases, you get their name as soon as you shake their hand. Uh, and so what I do is is I walk through them through a process. So within the first 30 seconds of every conversation that I have, every sales conversation, this is how it goes. It's like, hey, awesome, I'm Ryan Stuman. Nice, nice to meet you. Your name is? They tell me the name. Awesome, John, where are you from? Cool, John, well, you know what's awesome? I have another client that's from Philadelphia as well, and he's getting the same exact results doing the same stuff that we're doing here right now. What I usually say is that somebody will say, oh, hey, I'm from Dallas, Texas. I say, awesome, you know what? I've got a couple of clients over in Dallas that are getting real estate leads right now from neighborhoods over like Highland Park and everything else, so we know it works in your market. That's exciting. I'm showing them social proof and bonding with them up front. It's like, hey, I've helped somebody just like you from the same place that you're from, you know, when you meet people, I, I'm at the, uh, let's just, I'll tell you a real story. I'm at the uh, casino gambling with Jesse Brewer and some, uh, some Bengals cheerleader, right? That he's like got hanging out with. It's really cool. And, uh, and so we're gambling, playing blackjack and they're from Kentucky. And the lady, first thing she says is, where are y'all from? And they say, whatever the name of the city in Kentucky that they're from. And then she's like, oh, do you know such and such? And they knew him. And then like there was this instant bond. It's like, oh, my God, you know, what's his name? Oh, man. You know, this I, do whatever. Right. But there was like this instant bonding. And then they spent the whole rest of the time talking and they were even trying to help us on the cards to where we could uh, make extra money. Right. It, or not make money, just keep from losing money. Like they she was actually the manager and came over, and looked at our cards and was telling us the best way to bet and stuff like that. And all because they had gone through this bonding over where they're from. So as a salesperson, you know, that's how I operate. I say, what is your name? Where are you from? And then I give them a real life example. So maybe you don't have a global business like I do, right? So like I've done a lot of people, I've helped a lot of clients from Texas. I've helped a lot of clients from New York, California, Florida, stuff like that. But I haven't, I don't know a lot about South Africa and I haven't helped a lot of clients in South Africa, right? And obviously it's not, I don't believe it's as big of a place as the United States, but at the same time, it's a rather large country. But when I have the South African clients, which I, I love, right? And the South African people reach out to me and uh, I absolutely love working with them. They're cool people. They're hustlers. I tell them, hey, yeah, I've got other, it's same with Australians. I say, yeah, I've got other people in Australia that are using this program as well. I use the whole country as a geographic identifier, right? So in Texas, in, in, in America, I can niche it out and I can say, yeah, I've got people in Dallas. I've got people in Philadelphia. I've got people in Los Angeles. But when it comes to uh, South Africa, I don't even know the name of a city over there, right? So what well, Cape Town, but I don't know that anybody's from there. So I just say, hey, I've got people in South Africa right now that are using it. And so niche it out as much as you can. Don't lie about it. But if you have to broaden the geography uh, it's okay, but you're showing them that somebody in their relative, in their geolocation has got similar results. And that's how you start a bonding process, right? Once you move on from bonding, you go into the trust part, right? Cause you've got to, people buy from people they know, like, and trust. You ever heard that saying before, right? They say it all the time, pretty much every sales training, every, ever people buy from people they know, like, and trust. So that's your job as a salesperson to become someone that they know, like, and trust. Well, we've already covered the knowing and liking cause you've given them your name. And you've created some familiarity by the geography location and the bonding phase. So next, we've got to get them to trust you. So how do you get somebody to trust them? Well, what I use is, again, is social proof. When Earlier when I said, hey, I have somebody in your area that's getting the results that you want, uh, that's social proof. They start to trust me because they feel like somebody that maybe they don't know, but somebody that's similar to them has got those results. And, it, and since I have the confidence and since I have the experience in getting those results previously, they can picture me getting those results for them in the future. You see how that works right there? And because of that, they start to trust what I say. It's like, well, if other people have gotten the results that we're looking for, he must be doing something right. I don't know, yo, and I don't know why, but I trust him, right? That's just how it works. But you've got to go through the bonding phase first. And then you got to hit the trust. So now that you've got them on you, because that's the most important part, because they already had uh, some level of want for your product, right? Or they wouldn't be at your front door, right? But now you've got them sold on you. You've got to uh, pique their interest, right? This is phase three, piquing their interest. 
Uh, now that they like you and trust you, you need to get them interested in your product. Listen, you've shown them social proof. You've told them that people have gotten the results that they want. So now you need to explain the process of how they can get those results. And you need to start projecting as if they've got those results already so that they can see themselves getting those results so that they want those results, right? Now, listen, if somebody shows up on your car lot and they're looking at cars, their interest is there. If somebody's on your email list and they reply with a couple of questions, the interest is there. Right. If someone's, you know, calling you on the phone and asking you to quote a price on something, the interest is there. Right. It, it's your job to to identify the fact that they have an interest for it. And then you move into the next phase, which is desire. OK. And so you've got bonding and trust, interest and then desire. Right. So now they like the product. What do they have a desire to take that next step? Right. Do they desire that product? Is that product something that they're interested in, but it is something that they got to have. And the way to do that is by building the value, right? And the value may be saving money, right? It may be beating the competition, cutting down on overhead, might be time efficiency, it might be luxury. But you, your job is to keep asking questions and fact finding until you, until you find the desire. I always say this, and I've said this on this show plenty of times before. It's like nobody wants a mortgage. Nobody wants a real estate agent. Nobody wants an insurance agent. What they want is a house, right? And you've got to get their desire has got to be, you've already sold them on bonding and trust on you. So move past that. Now you've got to find that underlying desire that they have and show how your product solves that desire, right? Your, your product can feed that insatiable desire for more. <laughs> and so make sure you go through desire. So let's one more time before we move on to the last one, bonding, trust, interest, desire, only when you have bonding and trust, only when you have piqued their interest, only when they desire your product, do you have the ability to make an offer, right? Because if you make the offer before that, it's wasted. And if you a magician reveals all of his steps up front, nobody's going to sit around for the grand finale. They don't care if you pull the rabbit out of the hat. They know there's a trap door on the side of the hat that you just pushed them through. Okay. So the offer is the more import, most important part of the process as well. It's the close. And the close is the grand finale in a series of small sales. But the close is the thing that gets you paid. And the offer is the thing that draws them in and makes them decide whether they're going to pay you or not. The offer is for, I'll solve your problem for XYZ dollar amount. Well, here's what I found with the awkward offer. Oftentimes when someone's got the interest, desire, bonding, and trust, they've moved through all the steps and they make the offer. They have this like silly I think it's so silly, man. They have this silly mentality over like he who speaks first loses. You ever heard that, Robert, where they're like, hey, man, so what you do is you present the offer and then you shut up. And even if it's really quiet for 30 minutes, you don't say anything. You ever hear anybody t say that before? Oh, yeah, dude. That's a that's 101 to, to most old heads. That's a classic. Well, and the problem is if the dude on the other side knows that and neither one speaks, that's just weird. That's cheesy. I mean, it's just, it's outdated. You know what I mean? It doesn't, I, I don't see the strategy in there. I mean, you give them time to review it, this and that, but there's no, that's, you know, it's not a, it's not truth in all the time. If you speak first, you're done, right? Yeah. So here's what I do. Uh, once I present the offer, I'm like, here's the thing. You can you can purchase showupandclose.com. You can go to buyshowupandclose.com. It'll change how you look at uh, sales. It'll change how you're able to uh, increase your closing uh, conversions, your closing ratios. It'll be able to increase your growth. What's next? Right? I'm going to engage them by asking them a question and keep pushing them forward. Hey, this is the offer. This is how awesome it is. What's next? This is the offer. These are the benefits of how I'm going to solve your problem. What's next? And that way they, that I'm eliciting a, a response from them, that way I don't have to sit there through any kind of awkward science. I've said, hey, man, this is the pro program is $497. What's next? Right? So then it's on them. So if they don't say anything, they look weird and they are the ones that are kind of stuck out. So, again, interest, desire, bonding, trust, and only when you've completed those four phases can you move on to phase number five, which is offer. So, hey, I'm super excited. Hope you uh, – Listen to this in the gym, traffic, whatever. If you missed uh, the other previous 18 shows, just like scroll through here and turn another one on here. We try to keep these short, sweet, and to the point. And uh, be sure if you want a copy of my book, just uh, go to uh, the, your text thing on your phone there, right? And just text HC Podcast to 44222, and you can get my book absolutely free. Make sure you go check out 
uh, clickso.com, sign up. You can look at mine, clickso.com forward slash closer and see what it looks like. And if you want to be uh, really cool, you'll leave us a review on iTunes and you'll have a really awesome username and we'll like, we'll shout that stuff on the air here. So until then, see you next time, closers. 